Recording is started. Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to the KCP community meeting on March the 21st. Um, and thanks for um, submitting the community meeting issue, um, Andy. <laughs> That's great. Having said that, since this is a good um, thread, if anybody of the community members is interested in moderating this community call, please give us a ping on Slack. We are very happy um, to, um, you know, to be helped out with, um, yes, thanks Nolan for submitting the issue. For helping us out in moderation, I think um, MJ did it in the past as well. It was great, thanks a lot. Again, looking forward for uh, community members to help out in um, moderating uh, this community call. Um, in that case, without further ado, I see one topic, rebase to Kubernetes release 126, Mike. I was just looking for an update um, from the people who are actually working on it. I suppose there's going to be a little bit of silence, as I see now. I just look up the thread in Slack. Um, so um, I think Andy was on the hook, who's on PTO this week. Um, and he mentioned that 126 rebase is more challenging than previous ones. Because of the switch from the groups from KCB Dev to KCPIO um, and changing internal libraries for the logical cluster stuff, um, there is some cleanup necessary before uh, we can start rebasing on top of 126. That's the latest update that I have. Ah, oh, yeah, thanks, Nolan. That's exactly the thread link that I wanted to copy. Uh, so that's about the info that I have right, right now. We're having up on the radar. Um, but have to do some vacuum cleaning, I guess, before we can start fully. Nolan, um, you raised your hand. Sorry, I didn't see this before, because I was looking oh, for the right. thread. That's all right. I was just going to mention the thread. Um, yeah, I think I think Andy had gone down uh, a particular path with it and decided to back up and take another try uh, because of the way things have moved around. So is there some expectation of when it will be done? Or um, is there confidence that it will be done soon or at all? Or uh, For sure. I mean, when <laughs> it's necessary that we continue rebasing. I don't have uh, an exact timeline uh, yet. At least I didn't see any from, uh, from the threat and from the discussions that I was aware of. Um, but stay tuned. I will make sure to ping in the uh, once he's back, um, maybe we will have some more information about this, but we're having it definitely on the right areas. All right. Thank you. Uh, and I suppose in a related vein, I also want uh, should have written down in the agenda, but an update on the next release. Um, are we still waiting for something, or should we cut a release where we're at, or after we do some of the other cleanup you're talking about, or what's the thinking on that? Um, Nolan, David, do you have any updates on this one? I don't recall that uh, we had a concrete release time date yet for 0.12. Um, I guess we want, um, Nolan, as far as I recall, the permission claims narrowing PR definitely to land um, before we cut the release, because this is going to be a, an important feature and it will introduce admission into the virtual API export APIs uh, view, I think it is called nowadays. Um, so, uh, Nolan, um, you, you're nodding your head positively, so I guess that's a yes. Uh, we would definitely want to get that permissions claim PR in. I think we want to have the rebase in, uh, and MJ linked the discussion where we're seeking community feedback for any other stuff that people would like to include. Yeah, I think one more thing which we wanted to get in is the, our client shenanigans and SDK stuff. So to avoid tagging unnecessary packages. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that clearly. What was uh, he said that we want? So there was a, we released a client as a separate model, and we understood that that's a bit of pain to maintain. So we moving it even forward, making it a, single SDK package, which contains API and client. 
and this will be a bit of breaking change in how vendoring happens if you don't vendor whole KCP. So it would be good to merge this first, this a 2PR work, so we can avoid tagging clients package, which will never be released in the first place. So if we're planning the base, this one plus something else, I suspect it might be a week or two until everything goes in before release. Right. I don't quite understand that, that comment about the won't ever tag the client package. So we merged already the client package, which intended was intention was to uh, split ability to vendor API and KCP go client separately. But what we saw once we merged it, that if you make a change into API, you immediately have to change the client too because of auto generators. This means you basically unintentionally created a chicken and egg problem for the development process. Each and every time you create, you change something, you need to do multi PR effort to merge it. So last meeting, okay. last community meeting, we had a discussion how to avoid that, and we agreed on consensus to merge everything into one as two modules into one called SDK, which will contain API and client, basically. Thank you. That makes sense. It's maybe about the release, I posted two pull requests, which are, you know, nearly ready for review, or, I mean, some end-to-end -end tests are still failing, but I think they just need a bit more love. And possibly that would be great if we could you know, have them in the next release. There is a, the previous one is mainly a cleanup of something that has been kept quite weird uh, in the workload sync <clears throat> way of uh, when you want to import uh, new resources from the physical cluster. It has been clumsy quite since the beginning and it's quite important um, uh, cleanup here. And the other one is, is about um, using network policies to isolate workloads running on the physical clusters per origi originating workspace. So this, the other one is quite as a big security one, and it would be great uh, to have that in order to harden the, the, the TMC a bit more and make it a bit more serious step by step. So these are not critical, but at least it would be uh, nice to have. Right, thank you. I guess we have a lot of information about 126 in the next release. Mike, is that okay with you um, when it comes to answers? Yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, if there are no more questions around the release or the rebase, next topic. Mike, you seem to be confused about namespace locator. Yes, and David, during the start of this meeting, was trying to answer in Slack. Um, I, I, was reading what David wrote. I'm still a little, I still don't understand. Um, can I just ask? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. So explain it to me like I never heard of namespace locator. Um, when do I know when to use it? What is it? Where do I put it? What does it look like? Um, and you don't have to answer in the meeting. If you know, if you can just add something to the documentation, that's fine. Um, yes, my point sure. is yeah, uh, maybe I can just give um, uh, some background. Um, before AppSyncing was introduced, namespace locators were were mainly a sort of implementation detail <clears throat> on the syncing uh, on the syncer side. In fact, you, when you you sync objects downstream, since we sync into you know other namespaces, uh, which are have uh, hashed names, so you have to by some way keep the origin. The origin of the of the of the synced object, as it is uh, in in the KCP uh, workspace. So obviously uh, you have to uh, mainly store on the downstream object the sinker where it um, it is related to, which is the sync target UID mainly, uh, but also the workspace uh, of the upstream uh, and possibly. Now you just said workspace. Okay, yes, workspace and namespace. And so 
you know, initially it was um, an implementation detail. Now uh, you still need to have, since it's the only way um, to, you know, identify, and to, I mean, to give you the way back to upstream when you watch an object downstream. So for up syncing as well, it became a bit more, you know, visible because you need to have the locator available uh, in order to be able to up sync a downstream object to uh, to upstream because you need to know where to put the the, the, the downstream object upstream. So that's that was, that's what made it a bit more visible and obviously the doc has not been updated uh, uh, related to that. So obviously we should now probably put that in the docs since in some way it is required in order to prepare downstream resources to be up, to be upsynced. The other thing which is a bit, you know, um, a sort of inheritance from legacy is that initially we did not support cluster-wide resources. And so this was called the namespace locator because all the objects that we were syncing were uh, namespaced. But obviously, and, and in order to optimize, you just put the, as at this time, you were, we were putting this annotation only on the namespace. And so it was common to all the resources synced for, for a given namespace. Obviously, when cluster-wide resources were introduced, then you we had the same need, obviously not to find back the namespace, but at least to find back the corresponding uh, KCP workspace, which um, finally led us putting also this annotation on directly on cluster-wide resources when we sync them. And okay. so the situation is mainly the name should be locator or upstream locator instead of namespace locator and it should be documented uh, aside you know with in the documentation where we we described location placement and syncing obviously okay thank you very much the outline uh, i understand the outline now um i can live with a legacy name uh i just need to have it documented so i know how to actually use it because in edge mc we definitely do want to upsync uh cluster-wide resources as well as some non-clustered resources I'm sorry, uh, namespaced ones. Um, and we will be using the, we are planning on using the TMC syncer for a while. So I do need to know how to use it. Sure, sure. Yeah. And and by the way, uh, there is a side topic here, which is <clears throat> more generally up syncing and how to open up syncing to customization. I think here we should probably have some sort of design session with all the people interested in in that because we have to define a number of things like, you know, uh, the rules that drive and control what can be upsynced at the type level and at the instance level. And then where do we put yes. those rules uh, on the sync target, on the KCP workspace? So there are a number of questions that are completely still opened because now, I mean, for now, everything is hard coded. So we just have to, to bootstrap the topic. It's, it seems to me with all the, the, the you know, stakeholders interested in that. Very good. Yes, do, do please schedule something soon and invite me. I thought I had heard con people saying um, that those things were settled in the way that we needed. So this is um, disturbing news. So do please let's get it settled soon. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Next week, hopefully. Sounds awesome. Actually, also very interested in this one. I also labeled um, this issue as head wanted um, in case somebody from the community wants to deep dive in the TMC code. I know, David, you're pretty very much underwater with this work. So um, if there is any support we can get, um, that would be great as well. Um, but sure, um, chicken and egg problem. You have to dive into a topic first before you can before you document. So um, it's also a complex one. Any more questions around namespace locator? And thanks a lot, David, for the explanation. And Mike, for the answer. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. Cool. Um, next topic. Um, cross workspace impersonation problem. Stefan. Stefan is not on the call. Um, I recall briefly what this was about. Um, it was based on a pull request, maybe 
Lionel, um, you're on the call actually. Can you give us a little bit on background on your PR? Because as I recall, um, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the PR is not quite related to what uh, Stefan is trying to do. I think uh, this uh, mm -hmm. PI lifecycle CRD is, uh, uh, is currently the way it's done is like uh, an extension of Carl KCP. Whereas what uh, Stefan is trying to do is, uh, let's see if we can provide this as a service, right? So in case, right. and uh, so it, there is issue around uh, impersonalization uh, and he's, he's yeah working on that, right? trying to see if it can be solved. Within yes, precisely. Um, as far as I recall, um, the whole idea around this pull request of the API lifecycle custom resource definition is that um, whenever um, yeah, it, a workspace it, is being created, resources are supposed to be created automatically once a workspace gets into life, right? That's sort of like the whole idea of the API lifecycle yeah. um, pull it, request. It's, yeah, it's more like when an API binding is created. Yes, yeah. precisely. Yes. Yeah, when something then something happening in the user or even in the service provider uh, workspace or even outside of 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 KCP. Right. So, and in that case, uh, we have a separate party which was called here the API lifecycle API provider, um, and um, currently, if you have a service account that runs here on this side in the service that makes calls um, towards the API export um, virtual workspace to execute um, you know, a creation of those resources, um, there is an investigation going on how to uh, impersonate that service account um, within the requests um, that is happening here. Because today, the biggest problem is that service accounts um cannot cross workspace boundaries right so a service account um, is always bound to a concrete workspace and uh, as part of the authorization um, it's like it will be essentially denied um, access to any other workspace because of tenancy and um, like for this special case we want to have um, a little bit more um, yeah we are brainstorming ideas how to uh, overcome this. We already have some sort of impersonation implemented in the API export virtual um, view or workspace nowadays, but this goes one step further. Um, I would say, since Stefan is not, not here, uh, let's maybe defer the concrete discussion until next week so he can also comment because he created this. Um, Lionel, will you also be available next week if, uh, if that's possible um, to continue the discussion? Um, maybe then with Stefan? Yeah, sure. Awesome, thank you. Um, discuss KCP Edge, whoa, uh, POC environment. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a compl complex name. Uh, Braulio, yes, hey, welcome. Yeah, we talked All about right. monitoring our recall. Yes, uh, let's yeah. go ahead with the topic. Uh, thanks, thank you. Uh, so I'm just going to try to to share to share my screen. So for oh thank you thank no so you you have done so uh, I I don't sorry could you reshare your screen again sorry I, I my mistake I I try yes I just unshared my screen and I see yours um, can you see mine oh okay okay great so uh, for 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 the KSPH, so we are we are now uh, yeah, Braulio we don't see yours yet you don't see mine yet. Yeah, it's listed as a presenter. It's not main screen. Is there a way to put it main screen, sir? Uh, let me try. Um, you know what? I will do a recursive thing. I will share Braulio's. Uh, Braulio, can you reshare your screen? Yeah, there you sure, go. Sure. And then I will share your shared screen on the same call, which is an interesting experiment. Now we see it full screen. And now we don't. And now you're presenting again. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, may, may, maybe you can share uh, your, your screens, so just, uh, I'll go. Oh no, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't <yeah>. like. 
Yeah, yeah, I can just everybody stop and have Browlio start. That was good enough. Okay. So I just unshared. Okay, let me try to share again. This is good. I can see it. Good. Okay. Uh, so, so for for KSP, uh, Ash, so we, we are building uh, a, a dev test in, in environment. So for our next POC, uh, uh, to to deploy K K KCP and, and the components required for KSP Ash, uh, and and for for that, so we we are the, we are uh, experimenting with the uh, with the KSP play, play, playground, uh, so developed by Fabrizio, to to deploy uh, to help us deploy the components that are required for for KCP and also. See what are the gaps. See which components we have. We, we can deploy. Uh, which components of, of KCPS so we can deploy you using uh, the the play playground. So we are we are now doing some explorations and then we have uh, um, have identified some something some um, features that, that that are are missing for for the KCP playground. For example, uh, the ability of creating sync targets with, with, without requirements to attach to a P cluster. And also the uh, ability to create uh, KSP objects to already an existing uh, namespace, and the, also one thing I've identified also the 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 a way to configure the the, the kind of clusters, passing configuration files that are created by the, the tool, and for for the components for the for needs for the KSPS KSPS, so we we need we we need the a way to deploy our, our controllers and, and as well as to to sync it, uh, the uh, to 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 deploy the 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 sync the sync as to to the to the case case PHP clusters per se, uh, and so the, so we, those those are what we have found so far, and we we also lo looking closely to, to the KCP uh, uh, playground PR on on KCP. So and and we we are we are looking forward yeah to, yeah to see yeah. To, to, yeah, to look forward to see yeah, it, it merged it merged to to the main branch. It's gonna also help us with our further explorations. That's very cool. Thank you, um, Prelio. Since uh, we chatted about the monitoring in the past, is this related to this playground as well? The monitoring bit, or is this a completely different initiative? Uh, so uh, for for the monitor that we discussed before, it was about uh, on, we are we are b beside building the dev test environment, we are also building a, a, a large scale uh, deployment, a large scale infrastructure, and and the, the discussion that we had initially was to deploy the monitoring for 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 that large scale infrastructure de deployment per se, uh, but as well we we are, uh, as well did something also that we want to do for this dev test so the deploying yeah the mon monitoring yeah, tools. Okay, cool. Another question for um, um, deploying the KCP ground um, itself, the topology, are you using the existing contracts that we have in place or you have your own automation for this? Oh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, we do have, in KCP, we have Helm charts available, um, at least in you know initial state. Uh, and I'm wondering if you are leveraging in any sort of form those to deploy the KCP playground, or is this completely separate? Uh, so the KCP pl 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 playground has 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 a, um, a YAML file that you can configure. Uh, yeah, the KCP environment. So we wish we. Should, we uh, which namespace to create and and, the, and also create some resources. So um, I'm using the the YAML file there that is specific for the KSP playground. I see. Awesome. Um, very cool. Very nice. Any more questions or comments regarding the playground? Yeah, uh, quick one. Um, is I think I saw Fabrizio on here. Is that correct? Am I correct? Yeah, I did. Yes, here I am. Hi, hi Fabrizio. Hey, I wanted to say uh, deep thanks from our team to you for giving us the playground to work with. And if uh, we can help you in any way in testing and getting your PR pushed ahead, we'd love to do so. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to see this being useful. 
uh, I followed up on um, last week uh, uh, comments, and so yeah, I'm 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 trying to get it merged as soon as possible. I think that there is a maybe I I, I have a question. So last week, Stefan um, asked. Uh, to find a way to make sure that uh, what is in the playground is, is tested and and the point that, and it is not difficult because the playground is built on top of the test framework so it is just a matter to write a unit test the problem is that most of the playground uh, in the playground currently we have four examples and three of them are testing the uh, um, deployment being upsynced and in order to do so, we cannot use the fake cluster because as far as, as my um, research went, the fake cluster does not work with um, uh, for up, up sync in deployments due to a uh, limitation uh, on the DNS part. So the DNS uh, endpoint that, uh, are not generated. This means that if we want to have the, this unit test running, we need to create actual kind of clusters. And I don't know if the KCP current testing infrastructure is okay with this or not. So I I, I did the work and I've uh, added a comment about this, which is more a logistic problem than a technical problem. But, and yeah, if someone can, can help me drive this, I, I'm I'm also open to look into fake cluster and see if there is a way to make fake cluster to work with uh, um, deployment syncing, but I'm getting in in uncharted territory. And that, David for sure knows better than me. So yeah, maybe for the detail we could uh, sync it offline because I'm not sure I have all the, the details, but I just wanted to mention that um, in the end-to-end -end test, I mean, I, if I understand correctly, you are speaking of end-to-end -end tests, and in the end-to-end -end test, you have a way, um, you know, in the various um, former framework utilities and um, uh, associated helpers, you have ways to uh, know if you are in the case where you are using a kind physical cluster or uh, you are using a fake cluster. So there are some TNC tests uh, which use that in order to you know, buy, um, skip parts of the tests possibly or just keep a complete test in case it needs a uh, kind. So that, that might also be a way to you know, have uh, everything tested apart you know, most part of all your tests would work also with fake clusters and some specific tests that would require kind, you could just uh, gather in uh, and, and condition to to this, uh, uh, to the presence of, of a, an external kind cluster. I mean, there are helpers for this. Okay, uh, I, I will take Don't a look and eventually I, I will ping you. Sure, yeah, feel free. Okay, um, Fabrizio, is there any interest in oh, in uh, the the missing features that are enumerated here on the screen, or is that something you'd rather us just look for workarounds on our own? So I, I think that uh, no, that they are all good in the sense that. Uh, if they are needed, why not? The, the trickiest one, in my opinion, is uh, um, the one about uh, edge service provider workspace, because I think that the, the biggest problem would be that now the KCP playground is the, in the main repo, and I'm pretty sure that you cannot import the, the other stuff because of circular uh, dependencies. Circular records, yeah. Yes, so I, I think that's the, the, the more challenging. So I was chatting uh, with, um, I don't remember who, who, uh, about this. Probably the next step is to figure it out, a pluggable model for playground feature. But uh, I really would like to have this first version merged so we can build on top of something instead of having a moving target for everyone. 
Right, right. So yeah, our timelines are a little bit different. We, we've got a demonstration we're doing in April, end of April. So if there's something that we can do in the next couple of weeks, then fine. If not, we can work around and then revisit, um, you know, when and if you've decided to to take these to take these matters into your own code base. But thank you very much for contribution. Yes, so thanks a lot from my side. Um, I also um, reference the uh, pull request from you, Fabrizio, in, uh, in the community call, community call meeting notes. Um, so we get a little bit more ice on your original PR as well. Let me also add this. Oh, thank you very much for the great heads up. Um, if there are no more comments around this topic, going once, twice, I would say, Adam, next topic, demo install KCP Ansible playbook. It's your topic. Adam? Oh, sorry. Good thing you said ah. I was going to mute myself. So yeah, I was going to demo this a uh, few few weeks ago, and I forgot to put myself on the agenda. And then I've been busy, so we're going to show you today. So I've been uh, just a little backstory. I've been uh, playing with KCP um, as part of like a CI project. I've been working on. Let me turn my camera on here. Um, as a basically an isolated environment, we can test. Uh, our Ansible operators and do CI work in. And uh, how's it going? So uh, as part of that, I uh, came up with like just a little installer tool. I make uh, playbooks to uh, have shortcuts for things and uh, showed it to David and he thought it might be useful to share because uh, it might be use uh, good for dev work. Let me share my screen here. One second. So I have this all publicly available. Um, can you see my screen? So I shared the link in the uh, issue too, if you want to look it up. Uh, the only requirement is- No, I'm not seeing your, your screen. screen. Oh, no, no. Now I am. Okay. Okay. So the only requirement is Ansible. Um, and this is really designed, obviously, to be used on Linux. Um, you need sudo to use it, or you can just run as root. Uh, but you don't have to be root. Uh, you don't have to use a sudo command to use it, but your user has to have sudo. The playbook requires sudo. So, uh, yeah. So otherwise, uh, I have a machine here. It's a pretty uh, standard VM I just built up, and I've got uh, Kubernetes cluster running locally on six four four three. So I'm just gonna clone. So oh, if you just want to do a standard install, you would, uh, if you don't have something else running on 6443, you could just do playbook install KCP, and it'll basically just install it on 6443, start the uh, systemd service. Um, the defaults, if you want to take a look at them, are basically in this KCP file at the top. So you can set secure port, you can pass extra args, version, uh, root there, I've just been putting stuff into Etsy KCP as a default. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it'll install wherever, whatever user you're running as, I think, into like the dot something. Um, so you can override these here if you want to just, you know, manually change it here, or you could do something like, uh, so I would do something like, I've been putting it on 6447 locally. So I've already got, uh, actually, there's no there's no requirements. I think if you're just doing a straight install. For the build, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, it pre-installs stuff. I already had 11 on here running. I was testing this earlier, but it gives you some commands at the end here. I was setting the mode on the kube config file in the, uh, 
installer, but it was messing with how I handle the handlers um, for restarting the service. So that would be a nice feature to add to be able to actually set as an extra arg the kubeconfig mode, the admin kubeconfig file to make it readable by users other than root. Otherwise, um, you would export it. Uh, like so I just basically put it in here as a command you can copy. And this will copy it to your local user. Uh, One sec. Let me do that manually. I've been messing with this a little bit. Uh, this copies a good config globally are the same file. Is it here? It is. Oh, I see what happened. I missed an NN in there. Sorry. And let's export my local one now. OK. Now um, we are in the uh, ACP cluster. So, uh, and that's basically it. Uh, minus the, I'll fix that in the uh, in the comments there. Uh, but if you install a root, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You would already have your uh, uh, thing. And if you want to unset it, basically how I do it is I'll, I'll just unset group config uh, like that. And now I'm back in my uh, my standard uh, physical cluster again. So it's a good way to get it locally. I'm using K3s here uh, locally. I usually use K3s or uh, in 3D. Uh, question? Uh, just a very quick one. Um, out of curiosity, Adam, do you plan to go like a little bit beyond? Because I believe, like especially with Ansible, it would be nice to have like a topology deployed with KCP where we have things like sharding and or front proxy being set up. Is there, as I understand, it's like a single binary, single process installation of KCP right now, right? On a yeah. Machine. Um, and do you do you have any plans or ideas already? I'm sorry if I'm asking too much uh, of like a topological deployment yeah. of PCB. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, right now, I mean, the what I was doing before was just starting it in a terminal or running it in the background, uh, echoing out to a file. So I wanted to get it into a systemd file, and uh, I just kind of do Ansible for everything to reuse it later. Uh, and then David uh, actually suggested the option to build as well. Um, so. Right now, I'm kind of, kind of designed this for, for dev, for testing, uh, but I'm open to suggestions. I don't know what a production deployment of KCP would look like if there is such a thing yet. Um, but yeah, any suggestions, feel free to. Uh, I already had one, somebody from my own team who's also interested in Dimitri. He uh, uh, contributed to this a little bit, and I'm open to suggestions. Yes, precisely. Um, yeah, I think that's a good uh, shout out, Andy. Uh, I think there is. A parallel work with uh, on your site going on. Please go ahead. Yeah, so Adam, great contribution. Thank you. The, so we have an Ansible based uh, deployment already for a couple of proof of concepts that we did before. Mm -hmm. We've got a larger uh, proof of concept coming up where we're actually doing a cloud environment where we'll be deploying like Prometheus, Grafana, et cetera, et cetera. The details of which are in the link that I sent a little bit further up there, the 1126 comment that I made. There's a doc on it. So if you're looking to pair up and you want to do something that's more production like, we'd love to have you, you know, have some help. Yeah. Just to, something to consider. Yeah. And I'm always looking to help with uh, other open source projects, especially ones, you know, we, we might be using this down the road. So absolutely. Um, one more thing I just wanted to show you uh, so I don't eat up too much time. So you can also, you can pass extra args. So here I show an example of how I was passing this uh, sinker feature, um, which I don't, I think it's still, uh, a feature gate. Um, and then this is uh, for building, if you want to build from a source. And I give you a couple examples on how to run this. So, and you can rerun over this. It'll replace your uh, uh, your binaries and everything. So that one, if you scroll back up, this one just basically downloads and extracts them from the official release. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run that same, uh, and I'm going to add the option to build, and I'm going to build it from my fork, which is just a fork of uh, for uh, zero dot eleven. So you would just add another dashi, so source repo, and it's your GitHub uh, repo branch. Basically, you can you can source the uh, branch uh, separately, so you don't have to. You do have to set the branch. I haven't played with it too much, um, but if you're playing with changes locally and you want to deploy, then you would do something like that. Gets GoLang and make if you don't have it, and then it clones it and builds it, and it'll. Do the same thing. It'll basically install that now and update your system D file and everything, and you'll have your local whatever you just built running. Um, so this will take a little bit to build, so we don't have to finish watching this. I'll just leave it running. Anybody's questions? Otherwise, that's it. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any more questions or comments? That's fantastic work. Thanks a lot for the demo. Well, there it goes. Now it's built in the, ah. yeah. Very cool. So now if I go to, was it dash dash version? So now it's zero, 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 because I built it. And system, uh, quick thing. System, so if you want to just check your status of your process. So if you want to log, um, right, you can leverage journal CTL. So something like uh, that. That's all. I put this all in there so you could see uh, recent logs, or if you want to tail them, you just have like the FL or something. So you could see live logs of what's going on on there if, if you care. Um, I, I haven't done much else with logging. I was thinking about adding like something in var log, KCP, uh, but then you got to log rotate and clean it up, and I just haven't had time to do it. And it logs a lot. Uh, I left it logging to a file for a few days, and it was like 500 megs. So there's quite a quite a lot of stuff coming out of here. With journal CTL, it's not. Um, I think it caps it, but I haven't. I'll test that as well. It's in testing phases here. So anyway, that's it. Very cool. Yes, I do agree. We do. We are very chatty when it comes to logging um, right now. Um, yeah, nobody ever thinks of logging. Oh, <laughs> I think we had some good initiatives recently um, around introducing sh um, the structured logging that was uh, met by, by Steve. So I think uh, we are at least not on a bad path currently. Thanks a lot again, Adam. Um, sure. If there are no more questions, let me reshare my screen again. Um, Mike, I see you have another point regarding 0.12. Is that, was that being answered, no. Beth? OK. Yeah, that, that was just to account for the earlier discussion. Awesome. Thank you. And then uh, the next one, uh, last one, um, Andy, announcement, new blog posts. Yeah, yeah. So we did some really cool work last year on uh, scaling to a million plus edge devices. This is work we did in combination with Red Hat CTO office at the time, um, Frank Zdarsky. And so we were able to build out this big proof of concept that, you know, how would we measure what the bottlenecks are when we got to the scale of a million plus edge devices. So Adam, and this is right up your, your alley here, as you're looking through this article, if you're reading it, dude, just understand that all of this was enabled via Ansible. Uh, and so we have playbooks and so forth that we worked on. And we're looking to now take this to the next level is to, and this was prior to KCP and KCP edge. The next evolution of this is to bring this to KCP, KCP edge. And so we can start to test for bottlenecks there and and so on and so forth. So Braulio gets all the props for creating that cool little graphic there. I, I would have chosen cats, but herding dogs is 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 just as difficult. I can vouch for that. So yeah, so I wanted to say uh, in front of all of us at the at the community here, thank you, Braulio, for posting this. And I hope everybody gets a good read out of it. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. That's it, sir. Thank you. Awesome. That's an extremely uh, nice thing to see. Um, thanks a lot for the great read. Um, any more comments or questions regarding this topic? OK. Thanks again. That's great. Uh, in that case, 
I see Stefan pinged me and he's now on the call. Um, cross workspace impersonation problem. Stefan, maybe can you, yeah, I already started talking a little bit about this, but maybe you can um, put it in your own words summary again. Yeah, it's it's a heads up, um, not necessarily to be decided or so here. I mean, this is much bigger probably. But um, we, we had this, this topic uh, some weeks ago, if you go down to this workspace creation, um, challenge like you create you use the service account to create another workspace for a user and workspaces have owners and initialization happens as the creator basically of that workspace objects object and the service account is, is living in a different workspace so it cannot do anything outside of its workspace so in particular it cannot initialize um, a sub workspace somewhere else and um, this already hinted at, at um, yeah, a more generic problem that um, you want some kind of cross workspace functionality, which looks like impersonation. So in this case, a service account which can create workspaces should do it under the name of somebody else, like um, the owner of the, the parent workspace in this case. And um, Lionel came up, so if you move up, scroll up, um, you know, came up with the topic of um, API lifecycle, where, uh, yeah, basically next to an API export, you can define lifecycle properties like a webhook, where manifests come from, and then there's a controller which lifecycles a binding workspace. So you have a user there on the right side; it binds to the to the green API, and the green API has a lifecycle object in parallel, and the blue um, the blue controller, that's basically the provider of this lifecycle functionality, should be able to operate um, in this user workspace. So uh, workspace which only binds the green objects, like the green, green API. And again, this is something like um, some delegation of uh, yeah, um, impersonation, basically, of a user. So um, the, the workspace in the middle could provide a service account for the blue workspace to do this job, right? So the blue uh, service account has to use uh, the identity of the green service account to create something for the user. So there we have something again, which is like impersonation. And um, this is a very early sketch, uh, just to show the, the topology or the, the, the pattern here, the, um, how this problem looks like. And this looks very similar to the problem I showed in the beginning about workspaces. So we briefly talked about that. Um, I, yeah, I think this document, if you're interested in those sort of processes, um, get involved. Um, there's one challenge, obviously. In the very beginning, we said Kubernetes service accounts are per workspace. So they cannot go beyond the workspace. Um, we never excluded that there might be another service account concept, which is cross workspace, but outside of um, yeah, the service account concept from Cube. So, um, and I think this could even be done today. So you could have basically user accounts, like with a single sign-on or a DC system, for example, which are meant to be service accounts. So you could build that today. But here's the topic is to, to yeah, not use something like that, but to use the service accounts we have today and get this cross workspace functionality, but in a very specific, clear use case. Yeah, that's that's a bit of the idea of the challenge um, to work on that. Um, maybe as a background, uh, so Lionel, um, he can proceed with his idea, but um, what he cannot do without solving that is basically offering such a lifecycle service in an unprivileged way. So basically, um, the API lifecycle topic, um, there are yeah, basically three implementations you can do. You can build that deep into KCP, like very privileged in the core, that's obviously possible, but it makes the core bigger. So we're not sure you want that. Um, what, one point further, um, we, we could build that like here as a service. That's also fine if we, if we solve the problem. And the third one would be, and he could continue his work on that path, he could um, tell the green user here to run basically a controller in this um, workspace in the middle. Then it's not privileged because you can just use the service account, which is green. Yes, so the service account of 
that API provider. But then, of course, it's not very generic, right? So it's very, um, I mean, you, you have to do work to, to, to run this thing. And we were thinking the second solution, like having the service provider for lifecycle, if you can make this work, it's much, much more generic, much more powerful. All right. So much more uh, the pitch. Yes. Um, thanks a lot. Any comments or questions? Um, yeah, I've been also, as you can see from the comments, been thinking about this. And uh, yeah, the biggest problem, uh, at least with the stock capabilities, and um, I agree with you, Stefan, we just need to extend KCP for this, is because like the service account on the left hand side would need like impersonate verb, um, literally <laughs> permissions to do something else as another user, which is a chicken and egg problem. So I think yeah. we need something else That's, in core, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the impersonate verb is one idea. So just look mm. at Q power Q authorizes impersonation whether this is useful here we have to look much deeper right um but yeah something like impersonation report yes agreed okay great thanks a lot for the heads up so again if you're interested in in this area please let us know um or if you have any comments regarding this Okay, we have five more minutes left, so I will not iterate over all incoming issues. I would rather ask anybody who thinks um, that there is an incoming issue that you submitted and you would love to talk about in a prioritized way. Um, you need an answer ASAP, please um, shout now. I do hear silence. Um, in that case, I would suggest, if everybody is fine with that, that we simply defer iterating over the box um, of the incoming issues until next community call. If there are no objections, go in once. Yeah. Okay, twice. In that case, thank you, everybody. Wish you a wonderful week. And again, um, the heads up. If you're interested in moderating the community call, please give us a um, ping on Slack. We would uh, love to see also new faces moderating this session. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks.